a taste of what we can expect from this film. It doesn't give a huge amount away. So, Perry, let's <laughs> find out a little bit more about the storyline then, what kind of world we're looking at here. It's, um, it's a world at an end, um, but it's not a world filled with death and destruction. It's a world with um, loss on a huge scale. So something's happened. It's been an event and um, most of humanity has disappeared. So, um, uh, you know, resources are plentiful. Um, people don't, you know, the remaining humans don't have to fight amongst themselves. They're just almost completely alone. So it's a world in which you would seek out other people for companionship um, rather than fight for resources. Also, um, you know, the, the, one of the points that I make in the film is that the um, planet is flourishing. So although there's, as a result of this event and entities arrived, which is this lethal wind that pursues humans, um, it doesn't, it leaves the animals alone and it leaves nature alone. So there's kind of like an ecological message there. Yeah. Um, and the, the world is turned on its head. The same rules no longer apply. Um, there are places that grant, grant wishes. So, um, uh, and the young boy is traveling with his mother. She becomes ill. Um, and when she passes, he continues on his journey to a place that grants wishes and s collects a ragtag group of other people that he meets along who have their own reasons for wanting to venture to that place. Yeah, it, it's very interesting, this idea <coughs> of really the, the human here is the enemy to some extent. Often when you have a, 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 a film like this, there is an entity which comes along which is, you know, terrorising and terrifying mm. and actually from that perspective of looking at the planet, it highlights really kind of the damage perhaps that humans are doing. Is that, yeah. is that what you wanted to do? Yeah, in some ways, at the end, you know, you've got, you've got characters who want different things. So you've got a boy who obviously, um, it's, it's obvious what he wants. When he's travelling to a place that grass wishes, he's going to want his mother back. Um, which is why when he, when he initially reacts to his mother's death, it's kind of like a muted response because I, um, the way I see it is if you, if you knew that you were going to see this person again, in a two, three weeks or at the end of your journey, mm -hmm. you'd want to get on with your journey. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, and so he has that motivation. There's a, there's a scientist who, um, played by Jennifer Scott, um, whose sole aim is to return back to, find out why this happened and return, to the, return the world back to where it, what it was originally with no thought as to whether it's the right thing to do. You're also working with two young emerging actors yeah that's that in itself you know a lot of pressure on them because they're they're big parts very a, a, a great deal of pressure and i think they did a fantastic job and when we were casting the children um i knew only casting the adults was really quick um but when we were casting the children i think we had we did three workshops um and i i wouldn't have gone ahead with the film had i not been able to cast two 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 kids that were yeah. could 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 do it um flynn had a lot of a lot to shoulder um, and I think he did a great job. And Matilda, obviously, is a fantastic, you know, actress. Um, she's brilliant. So um, they did. They were very professional, um, and you know, I think they did a great job.